Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 219. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link. You can download the workbook, Excel Magic Trick 218 to 220. Hey, in trick number 219, we have a data set here, and we want to create a pivot table using a macro. So we can just run this macro, recorded macro code, and it will automatically create the pivot table for us. However, we would like to be able to add new records to the bottom here and anytime we add new records the macro should know that and put those extra records in the pivot table now in trick number 218 over here we did it with the Excel 2007 table feature if you convert a data set to a table it has a dynamic range and so that was perfect but if you don't have 2007 or you don't want to do it with that table feature then we'll use the offset function to define a range and we'll um, name that offset function range use the name in the middle of our pivot table wizard and that should do the trick so what we're going to do is we're going to create a dynamic range named range with the offset and then we'll turn on our macro recorder and create a pivot table alright let's start by uh, creating a named range that will be dynamic. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Control F3. Now this is the name manager in earlier versions it's define names. Now I'm actually gonna before I create a new name I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna create this formula that will define a dynamic range in this cell right here because it's easier to see in the video. Equals offset we're gonna use the offset function and there's one two three four five arguments. First argument is where do you want to start? From that starting position, do you want to go up and down any rows, left and right any columns? Then you got to tell the offset how tall the range is and then how wide it is. All right, we'll start with the first one. Hey, where do we want to start? A1. Now, I'm going to hit F4 because we have to lock that for our name, comma. How many rows up and down from the starting position do we want to go? Zero, comma. How many columns left to right do we want to go? Zero comma these first three arguments are if you want to remain have the uh, starting point in a1 these first three arguments do that because it says zero zero here that means we'll always start in a1 the fourth argument is how tall is it and we'll use counta counta counts everything except for blanks and we're just going to count column a and I'm going to hit my f4 key to lock it so right now it'll be however many that is a uh, 17 comma and now the width well we can just put four here because it's always going to have four field names close parentheses all right that is the formula we'll use in the name manager I'm going to highlight it control C and then escape control F3 and I'm going to click new the name I'm going to give it is dynamic range and down here in refers to, I'm going to highlight that, delete it, and then control V to paste my formula. Click OK. Now I'm going to test it and see if it actually works by clicking the collapse. Sure enough, it looks like it works. Uncollapse, click close. Now uh, we'll record our macro and then the pivot table and then turn the macro off. Now, f in earlier versions, you don't have to worry, you just turn the macro on tools macro record macros in 2007 you have to show the developer ribbon first off so you have to go to this this office button and then Excel options and then popular and then show developer tab and ribbon and you have to use the right file extension in 2007 .xls or .xls M. Don't use the .xlsx because that is a macro-free workbook. All right, in 2007 we can use this button. Let's turn on our macro. This macro recorder will just write the code for us behind the scene. All right, uh, we're going to call this pivot2. And then I'm going to click down here and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut. I'm going to do shift T. So it's control shift T will be our keyboard shortcut. Click OK. It was important that just one cell was selected here in our data set. And now I'm going to, uh, in 2007, go to Insert, Pivot Table, Pivot Table. In earlier versions, you go to the Data Menu, Pivot Table. 
and we want our range right here. This is 2007. It has a one-step wizard. In 2003, you have to go to step two, and then you find this range, and we're going to hit F3, and we're going to paste this name, double-click it. There we go. Now, in step three, in earlier versions, we have existing. So step three, we do that, and we're going to say uh, F1. Click OK. Now, uh, I'm in 2007, so I'm going to click and drag. In earlier versions, you have to drag to the sheet. But here, in 2007, I'm going to drag that to the row, sales to the values, SR to the columns, and close the field list. Now I can turn off my macro. Oh, you could do whatever formatting you want, you know, add some colors or whatever it is. Uh, you could, uh, if these were dollars, you would uh, right click, uh, value field settings, and down here under number format. Looks like it's going pretty slow here. You'd say currency or whatever you wanted. So you do all your formatting. Right, and then you click stop and there you go so we have our macro now we want to test this I'm gonna delete this I'm highlighting the columns and then I'm gonna right click delete so the pivot table is gone and now let's go ahead and see if we add some records to the bottom what will happen 7 slash 6 slash 2009 1 SR1. I noticed in the table that uh, SR on this date was 57, so if we add 1, it should go to 58. And then uh, we'll worry about formatting later. But now let's see if it works. I'm going to click in one cell here, and I'm using my keyboard shortcut, Control Shift T. And sure enough, just like that, it did that pivot table anew and included the 58 there. We could try it again just to make sure. Right click Delete. Add a new record here, 7 slash 6 slash 2009, 1, sales rep 1.5. Now when we run our macro, it better be 59, control shift T. And so there you go. There's how to create a macro and a pivot table and include the new records, both uh, 2007 and uh, with a table feature and in 2019 with the offset. All right, we'll see you next trick.